I'm Adrian Goins, and today I want to show you something that will destroy your Kubernetes workloads. I mean that in the best possible way. This is Kube Invaders. It's a neat little project created by Eugenio Marso in 2019. It's a Space Invaders style visual representation of chaos engineering for your Kubernetes cluster. I first learned about it from a blog article that he published on Kubernetes.io last week, and I immediately deployed it in my K3S cluster to see it at work. If you're not familiar with chaos engineering, the idea is to randomly wreak havoc in an environment as a means to test its resilience. For us, that means that it will randomly kill pods, which Kubernetes will restart, and we want to use this to test that our application can handle the unexpected. A key component of chaos theory is the concept of entropy. Entropy is the state of decay in a closed system. Nothing is stagnant. With no influx of new energy, everything will slowly decay, whether it's an organism, a building, a computer, or a piece of software. Chaos engineering allows us to accelerate that process. And what better way to do it than by sitting back and watching a little spaceship pew 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 our little pots, huh? You might be asking, hey, Adrian, why are you making a video about something from 2019? That's an excellent question, and I'm doing it for one re two, three, three reasons. First, I'm doing it because it's a cool project and I want to share it with more people. This sort of creativity deserves to be celebrated. Second, I'm doing it because it gives me a chance to show off the Helm 3 support in K3S. And finally, I'm doing it because if you're not using Helm, the instructions in the Kube Invaders repo for using Kubernetes manifests needed some love. I rewrote that section to work with Customize, and I brought them current with the Helm manifests. I'll open an issue and I'll submit a PR, but this video will show you how to install Kube Invaders from my fork into your clusters today. If you have the repo for this channel checked out, run git pull to refresh it with the content for today's episode. I've added the Kube Invaders content as a submodule, so run git submodule update to check out the code. If you don't have the channel repo checked out, you can find a link for it in the description. Now, we'll need an application that we can attack. If you don't have one of those, just look in resources slash common for the Rancher demo application that I use. It also uses customize, so edit configs slash sourcebars.yaml and then install it with kubectl apply dash k base. If you don't see the demo in the repo, be sure that you've run git pull and then git submodule update to refresh everything, or just check out the repo externally directly from GitHub. I'll put a link for it in the description as well. Once that's up and running, change into the resources slash e22 slash kube invaders directory, and let's dive in. We'll start with the Helm instructions. Since we're going to install into the kube invaders namespace, I'll create that first. The values.yaml file contains a number of variables that we can override, and right away we want to override the route host variable, setting it to whatever we'll be using for our ingress. In my case, that's kubeinvaders.cl.monoc.us. Set yours to any value, even if you'll just be putting it into Etsy hosts. There are other variables at the bottom that you can use to adjust how the alien pods behave, but we'll just leave those at the default. The last variable that we need to override is the target namespace variable. This points to the namespace where our workloads are running. You can provide multiple namespaces by making this a comma-separated string enclosed in quotes. K3S has included support for Helm 3 since the 1.17.0 release. This means no more tiller, so no more headaches with root-level account permissions. It does slightly change the install command. So instead of dash dash name, we provide the name after Helm install. Right away, we see something strange. It still says that we can visit kubeinvaders.local, which is because that value is set in the ingress configuration. Now, if we edit the ingress and change that, we should be correctly routed to the app. Except we aren't. We get a 404. This is actually from traffic, and it's hiding the real problem. If we go back and look at that ingress definition, there's a whole TLS block that points to a non-existent host in secret. Traffic is trying to use it, and since it doesn't exist, the whole ingress definition is invalid. Our host just doesn't exist. So let's nuke that and save, and now we can hit the site. The annotation for the HTTPS redirect doesn't work because we're using traffic and not Nginx, so be sure to type HTTPS before the URL. If you don't, you'll see cores errors in the console and well, the app just won't load. Without a TLS config in the ingress, we'll be using the default certificate for the cluster. This will generate a warning in your browser, but I think that's okay.
Not everyone is using K3S. Not everyone is using Helm 3. In fact, there are a lot of people who don't use Helm at all. So when I thought about how to make this video, I looked at the Kubernetes manifests because I figured, well, they'll work everywhere. So at the time of this video, they're different from the Helm templates, namely around the service account and role. The manifests use a role and a role binding, which requires cross namespace permissions. It also handles the service account token differently. The Helm templates use a cluster role and cluster role binding, and they reference the service account token secret directly by name. So armed with that information, I created customized templates for Kube Invaders and set them up so that you only have to set variables in one location. Actually, two locations, before installing it. So let's have a look. First, if you installed via Helm above, delete the release and the Kube Invaders namespace. That'll give us a clean slate. In the Kubernetes folder, you'll find a readme on how to do everything that we're about to do, and you'll find the base folder that contains the manifests. Edit sourcevars.yaml and set the variables in the data section. Customize can pull values from one resource and use them in another resource, so these variables will be available for all of the other manifests to reference. My namespace is where Kube Invaders will be installed. Target namespace is where Kube Invaders will look for the pods to kill. So just like before, this can have multiple namespaces if you separate them with a comma. Route host is the host name for the ingress. Customize requires that the customization.yaml file have a namespace declaration. So you also have to set the namespace in there. And that's the second place that I told you about, and there's really nothing we can do about it. Now, if you run kubectl apply-k base, it'll deploy everything for you. So how does this work? In the customization.yaml file is a key called vars. Within it is a list that basically says, go to this resource, extract that field, and make it available as this variable. The config map for the environment variables that the app uses pulls its data from config.txt. And finally, for the top level resources like namespace and cluster role binding, there's an extra configuration file in customize-config.yaml that tells customize to do substitutions within paths in those files. These variables are used all over, like you see here in the deployment. Customize enforces things like the namespace value for all resources, but when we need to specify something further down in the manifest, we can just use the variables. The last thing that makes this work is the token. When the service account is created, Kubernetes creates a token for it, but that token has a unique name that we can't know before it's created. Fortunately for us, we can create another token for the same service account with a name that we do know. Kubernetes will let us use that token in our pod to access the API with the permissions that we gave it in the cluster role. Kubernetes is easy, right? Now, let's save the cluster from aliens. Pew, 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 pew. It's actually a lot slower than that. It's more like pew, pew. But how much fun is it to say that? Hmm? When you're all done, you can delete the entire stack with kubectl delete-k base. It'll throw an error partway through because it's deleting the namespace first and then trying to delete resources that were in the namespace that it just deleted. So you can just ignore them. The cleanup is done. I really like customize, but until today, I've only used it for basic manifests like the Rancher demo. It's perfect for something like this, where I want to put manifests into a Git repository and be confident that when you run them, they'll work the exact same way. This is the core principle of GitOps, declarative and repeatable instructions that allow us to operate a Kubernetes cluster as infrastructure using principles of infrastructure as code. Maybe I'll make a video about GitOps. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. So there you go, your very own pod slaying robot helping you deploy resilient applications. Now imagine if maybe instead of turning red, the little alien ships could catch fire. And then we'd need something like this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to know when I release new content, click the subscribe button and the little bell icon for notifications. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you'd like to see me make a video on. I have a running list of content ideas and I always prefer to make the content that people are asking for. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.